we appreciate your participants participation sorry and invite you to ask questions at any time by typing it into the chat box once our speakers have presented we will address your questions the order of events today will include two distinguished speakers miss laura dabro business development officer of caribbean industrial research institute kariri who will be presenting on where kariri fits into the entrepreneurial value chain Ms. Dabro is a marketing specialist, business development officer and coach with over 10 years experience working with small, medium and large enterprises. In addition to a Master of Science in Marketing and Bachelor's in Business in Agribusiness Management, Ms. Dabro is, has professional certification in licensing, technology transfer, patent mining, trademark, and intellectual property. At Kariri, she provides training and coaching to investors, small and large businesses through the IDEA Advisory Service and the Business Hatchery Program. Welcome, Ms. Dabo. Our second presenter today will be Mr. Andrew Sipor. He is our business manager at our South Branch at Network Care. Mr. Seepal has 24 years of direct work experience with micro, small and medium enterprise sector. He holds an international master's in business administration with specialist, specialization in innovation and entrepreneurship. He also has a bachelor's in business administration. It is great to have both speakers here with us today. Now, allow me to welcome Ms. Dabu to address you. Welcome, Ms. Dabro. Hi, Crystal. Thanks so much. Um, I think that um, Anna was supposed to present first. Oh, uh, sure, not a problem, Ms. Dabro. Yes. Sure, sure, not a problem, Ms. Dabro. Um, we will start with Mr. C. Paul this this. At this time. All right. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Thank you, Ms. Grant, and, uh, and welcome, Ms. Dabro, my presenter. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome participants to our webinar, which teaches let's talk to, to the future of business in the agro processing and hospitality industry. As we observe Global Entrepreneurship Week in Trinidad and Tobago and around the world, NEPCO, as the national company mandated with the responsibility to help drive the growth and development of the local, micro, and small enterprise industry through our various GW activities, will be stimulating four GW themes for this year, which are education, inclusion, ecosystem, and policy. So what I'll do now, I will go along with sharing some slides I have prepared here for you. And Ms. Grant, if you could just give me an indication. Yes, the slides are up. Yes, uh, yes. the slideshow section. All right, so everything is up. It's not in slideshow mode. I believe, Mr. Sipol, you're having some technical difficulties because your uh, presentation on yourself. Right. Yeah. Are we viewing the slideshow now, Ms. Grant? Yes, but it's not in slideshow mode. Yeah. 
would you want to share it from your end? Because I'm I'm on slideshow mode here. Okay, not a problem. We will do that from this end. Once you have stopped sharing, we will share on this end. All right, go ahead, Ms. Grant. Sure. Wonderful. And this slide show is up. You can continue, Mr. Sipo. All right. Um, All right, well, go along with the slideshow. We are in, let's talk to the future of business in the agro-processing and hospitality industries in Trinidad and Tobago. If we move on to slide two, slide two, I'll give you a, a basic introduction on some of the services that we provide. As we all know, NECO has been an, an institution that has been in operation since 2002. We are promote ourselves to be the one-stop shop of entrepreneurial services. And this is what distinguishes us from all other lending agencies. At NETCO, we understand those challenges uh, and we offer the challenges of being an entrepreneurship and we offer our new, both the new and existing entrepreneurial support they need to sustain and succeed in their entrepreneurial venture. Some of the areas that we would assist in, we assist in business ass assessment, we assist in mentoring, business advisory, business financing, entrepreneurial training, and client-focused services. Our maximum for our first time borrow is $250,000, but for repeat borrowers, we can grant up to $500,000. If we proceed on to the third slide, we would look at the agro-processing and hospitality industry in China and Tobago. And we are aware that the agro-processing and hospitality industry is a, a fairly large industry and it covers various sectors. In agro-processing, you look at packaging of raw, fresh produce for sale, extraction and packaging of juices, making of pepper sauce, jams, and jelly. And at Netco, we also support local wine manufacturing. The hospitality sector, which is also a subsector, will cover the food and beverage, lodging, and recreation. Now, if we move on to the, the other side, we would look at the future of agro-processing and hospitality industry in China and Tobago. And we have recognized that the future of this sector will be defined by what business owners do along the three dimensions, which are critical to operating during this crisis. And the three dimensions we are looking at, and then we are looking at is how well we respond, how well we recover, and how well we Try the agro-processing, as we all know, the agro-processing and the hospital hospital industry, and it has by throughout the sector. This sector has been the sector that has been hit disproportionately hard compared to any other sector. As we think about the impact of the virus, what is expected is that business owners think about three phases going forward. 
And I would have mentioned this to you. Our, re the, our response or the response phase. This will, how we respond will, will entail what we do now. How do we survive? How do we protect our brand? How do we take care of our employees and by extension our stakeholders of the business? Secondly, we'll have to look at how we recover. What needs to be started? What can we do differently now? What needs to be done? What can we continue doing in our business operation? And, and, and we also have to reach to the point where we have to decide on what has to be stopped in our business operation as it relates to the COVID and the whole pandemic. Thirdly, how well we try. How do we take lessons learned from this whole COVID-19 experience and incorporate it into a more resilient organization going forward? Business owners that adopt the appropriate strategies, and we'll be looking at some today along the dimensions of respond, recover, and thrive will improve their their operations resilience in the challenging environment during and after the COVID pandemic. As we say, the, the agro-processing and hospitality sector is kind of subdivided into to, to, um, agro-processing, food and beverage, as well as hospitality. What we'll be looking at now is we'll be looking at the crisis, COVID-19 crisis and the challenges for the agro-processing industry. Now, as we have seen, businesses are struggling to procure in the agro-processing sector. Some of the businesses, they are struggling to procure material due to the fact, the simple fact that there is a liquidity crunch. We, they don't have the money. And this ultimately affects the manufacturing capacity of agro-processors. Secondly, because of um, the whole pandemic, the product shelf life and expiry of products is also a factor. Agro-processing and the processing of fresh and packaged fresh fruits and vegetables, they are subjected to that whole timeline and there is a time span, time, time span, sorry, for food and vegetables. So that is one of the areas that are, that are being affected. Also, what we have here as, a, as one of the challenges, which could also turn into an opportunity as well, is the missed opportunities to fill the void for B2B as a result of the shortage of Forex and the foreign supply chain. And also, there's also the disruption due to the lack of certification and product testing. All right, so uh, what I'll do now, I would also would move into some basic because we can't cover everything today. So I'll look at some of the opportunities for the agro-processing sectors industry. So first and foremost, there's an opportunity for businesses. So identifying that there's a crunch with, with some of the suppliers. Some suppliers may have been foreign suppliers. Some suppliers may have ceased operation. There is a critical need for businesses to restructure their supply chain and build new relationships with new distributors and trade partners. Secondly, well, this, this can also be done by restructuring their supply chain by supply, restructuring your supply chain design by building online sales infrastructure to com complement your traditional sales based capabilities. But now, by increasing sales from both your online and your traditional sales method, this can in increase your cash flow and also you'll have your working capital to, to, to meet operational expenses. Now, I would have touched on um, the opportunities as a result of the gap due to the, the shortage of foreign exchange and the opportunities for, for 
for agro-processors also to target some of the businesses, the existing restaurants and the businesses that we have here. Even the opportunities for agro-processors to have their supplies available at the supermarket. Now, for those who are operating on the micro and small level, what we would have identified is that most of you all, the capabilities are there, but in terms of getting your products out, there was a, a gap in getting your products out there to the supermarket. Now, my co-presenter um, from Korea will go along some of the recommendation you need to get your, 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 your products ready for the supermarket if we look at a local level. And if we look at a level by extension of an export market, she would look at some of the guidelines. So critical to, to this on this phase too, as well as linkages with Kiriri. And Kiriri, Kiriri has a Caribbean Food Safety Center. And this center is to guide agro-processors to improve the implementation of good food safety practices and food safety management so that they can provide safer food to consumers. Additionally, the strategies for the agro-processors would also be improvement in automation and infrastructure wherein the products are processed in facilities that are certified and conditioned where consumers are confident of, of, of consuming it. So now we have, because of the COVID pandemic and everything that is going on, we have consumers that are aware of everything that's going on. And this is an opportunity through linkages with Kiriri and the Caribbean Food Safety Centers to have your product tested, your premises sit, um, health certified, and things that are required to get your product out for agro processors to get your products out of out of your market into the supermarket and into the export market additionally as agro processors we need to build our capabilities to run the business both online and i would have mentioned this and you would hear this through all the presentation building your capabilities both online and offline because the online mode is more than likely if you look at the pandemic nobody has an answer to the pan pandemic as to when the pandemic is going to end to end but the online mode is going to remain relevant even during the pandemic and even after the pandemic you you all may also need to exploit and take advantage of in increased consumer awareness so there's a lot of consumers are now aware of what of the health benefits of, 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 of natural products. So there's an opportunity for people to be benefit from the, the alicinate opportunity to benefit from the medicinal benefits from foods such as ginger, garlic, lime, lemon, and you all could develop new, there's an opportunity to develop new product concepts critical to what and the Honourable Minister would have said it in her presentation um, during her budget speech. The preservation of foreign exchange is, is critical right now. The amount that Trinidad and Tobago export, the, the import, what we import from the food and beverage sector is a whopping $5.6 billion. Cereal and cereal preparation is $1.1 billion. Coffee and tea cocoa and spices is $218 million. Now, this, because of the disruption we are having from imports, this I see as an opportunity for agro-processors here. And it also helps with the preservation of China Tobago foreign exchange. So, in ending the, the, the presentation for agro-processors, the opportunity for Fargo processors to build their capabilities to meet with the gap in the local markets and to build their export capacity through linkages, through developing online platform is there. So we would now move on to, to the COVID-19 crisis. We move into and average industry. Now, as the impact of the COVID-19 continues to be felt throughout China and Tobago and by extension, the world 
food and beverage businesses are facing a significant reduction in consumption as well as dis disruption in the supply chain. Among the many industries impacted by the pandemic, the food and beverage industry is unique. Although they are unique in fulfilling some of basic man needs of mankind, we have felt some of the cries from our, our even our customers in the food and beverage because of the disruption. We would have 50% capacity. They were closed down for a limited time. Then there, there is. There, there was the, the, the provisions where food and beverage could have just operated with, with dining. So the, the scenario for the food and beverage industry has been really disrupted. And as you can see, one of the, the, the challenges that we are facing um, previously when we would have experienced where families, where friends, where co-workers would have gone out to a restaurant and dining in would have catered for, for probably the, the historical was the highest volume of sales. That isn't the, 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 the case right now. Additionally, we have a shortage of working capital due to reduced cash inflows. The sales volume has increased so much that the food and beverage sector are now experiencing huge cash flow shortages. Thirdly, supply chain disruption includes Suppliers at different, different, different tiers, they are ex experiencing some problems with suppliers at different tiers. Internal production processes due to, you would have shortages of staff, you would have had to cut staff as well. And also with the distribution for, for those who would have produced food too as well. Some of these strategies we would look at and we look at the future strategies for the food and beverage industries as it relates to Trinidad and Tobago. The food and beverage companies should, one of the strategies they should look at is to revisit their sourcing strategy, rationalize their product range, and assess the resilience and agility of their supply chain, as well as their route to market channel. So these are things that you need to do. You need to revisit your sourcing strategy as it relates to, to your supply chain, rationalize your product range, see which one is relevant, which one is, is practicable going forward, and also assess the, the resilience and agility of, of this supply chain as you look at your, your strategies for determining which distribution chain or channel you use to deliver your product is best for your target customer. Secondly, we look at e-commerce and distribution network. Your e-commerce and distribution network should be optimized and streamlined considering the impact of the change in commodity prices and other costs to save, as well as the increasing demands. Companies will be forced to revisit. Yeah, because of what's going on right now, and I mean, we are experiencing right now, there's a intro and Tobago. We can attest to the fact that there is a dip in oil prices. There is also the, 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 the potential for lost job, pay cuts. Demand for the food and beverage in products is, is more or less from what, what, what analysts has been saying. It's, it's, it's more or less expected to remain low. Yeah, remain low. Prices will become an even more critical to fact. Thus, the food and beverage company will need to focus on the consumer need. You will need to customize your product now. As customers now become, because of their price, because of their, their low disposable income, and they are becoming more price sensitive, we need to revisit and relook at our pricing strategies for customers. Customers, the, the food and beverage industry also need to take advantage of increased cost consumer awareness. And as I said, there's an opportunity for health, health drink. Additionally, there is also a short peak in consumer demands in certain categories. Once the situation is normalized, um, consumers, B2B, consumers will need to continue to shift on online sales and will require consumer products a company to visit your business to consumer strategy. Now we would finally look at the 
the direct impact on hotels and guest houses. Now, Netco, we cater for guest houses. And again, some of our, our businesses, guest houses and hotels have been um, in consideration of the global impact as well as local impact. Um, supply regarding the, the supply side, um, the supply side of the hotel industry has been significantly decreased in addition to the demand side of that. Most consumer consider in general avoiding travel and accommodation due to hygiene and health concern. With both supply and demand drastically reduced, hotel and guest houses have been inflicted heavy, heavy losses. Just to jump right in because of for the, in the essence of time, we would look at the appropriate strategy, recovery strategies for the hotel and guest houses. First and foremost, hotel operators can develop appropriate strategies based on their market segment to, to satisfy the need of different lodging target groups. You have to look at a local setting now because nobody could, could travel, nobody could enter, look at a package for that. You have to provide novel, interesting, and pleasurable accommodation experience to authentic happiness. And also provide opportunities for guests to gain a positive, unforgettable memories. We are all going through pandemic. That doesn't mean we all need to stay at home. There should be packages for families to go to, to sit in guest houses locally. So there is an opportunity there. Also, I've also identified the use of artificial, artificial intelligence as well as, um, as well as smart services such as technology platform, Hotels can increase business revenue, monitor, computer. In addition, finally, what they, what they could do is also have strategic alliances, mutual resource exchange with, with technology, skill products, um, co-joint investments to all generate positive electronic word of mouth. And electronic word of mouth is something probably new. It was new to me, but it's basically a form of buzz marketing and it can also be it it's basically word of mouth in an electronic form i would now pass you on I, to we would look at some of briefly we would look at what support is available to the agriprocessing and hospitality industry in trying to be as it relates to netco netco Currently, there is an entrepreneurial relief grant of up to a maximum of twenty thousand. Um, there is also a new loan package um, initiative that we have, and there is also, in addition to entrepreneurial development packages. So I pass you on to Crystal, and at the end of it, I would come, uh, and I would also. Um, Further elaborate on what support is available for this for the agroprocessing and hospitality industry in, in Trinidad and Tobago as it relates to NETCO. Crystal, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you, thank you, Annalise. Well, that was a wonderful, insightful presentation. And uh, in the essence of time, we will now continue our discussion by inviting Ms. Dabro from Kariri to present to you. Ms. Dabro. Hi, Crystal. Thank you. I'm unable to share my screen. So, I, That's yeah. No problem. We will share on this side. You, you can share now? No, I don't have the, um, the permission. Okay. Would you like us to share your screen for you? Uh, sure. No problem. You can share the presentation. <laughs> share the presentation. Thank you. We will do that. Um, Ian, unable to get slideshow? Yes, 
we are unable to get this slideshow of this presentation. Um, okay. Give us one second. Great. I think I'm able yeah. to share. Great. Wonderful. Welcome, Ms. Dabu. All right. Um, good afternoon, Crystal and viewers logged on. Thank you for having me. Um, I think that this is a vital topic, especially given the urgent need for economic diversification and building SMEs competitiveness. I thought that Arnold did a fantastic job in terms of analyzing the industry, as well as introducing um, how Kariri could fit in to the entire ecosystem. In 2020, this year, Kariri will be Kariri is celebrating our 50 years, um, our 50 year anniversary. Traditionally, we've been known for our testing services. However, within the last six years, we have expanded our service portfolio to include entrepreneurship and innovation simply because we want to provide an, an entire package, a holistic package for SMEs um, that would assist them in taking their ideas straight to commercialization. In terms of agro-processing and the hospitality industry. In the last 50 years, Kuri has worked with a number of entrepreneurs, of S, um, worked with a lot of an, um, SMEs, and you can see some of our customers along the entire value, tree, value chain, from farmers straight to the end user, can utilize Kuri services. And later on in the presentation, we can see how and why. A quick recap based on you know some of the things that Anil would have mentioned is agro-processing is the transformation of raw materials originating from agriculture forestry and fishery industries um, into a value-added product for a long time farmers have been getting the smallest they get low profit margins and labor and um, it's very labor intensive um, for raw material production it's it's not necessarily sustainable anymore. So, I mean, if we have farmers in the in the group, I would like you to give me a, you know, just put in the chat if you agree. All right. And in terms of business continuity, how are you going to add value to increase your profit margins? Because Anil would have spoken a lot about having cash flow should an event like a pandemic happen again because that is one of the things that was most challenging for entrepreneurs the lack of cash flow these are two examples to depict or to to, to demonstrate or explain um agro processing we have on the left jd's naturals she has hibiscus in her garden and she grows sorrel and she has processed those products to create hair conditioner and on the right we have another farmer she has processed her pimentos into a, a, a powder right so the and when you let's say for example you're paying twenty dollars for a hundred a hundred pimentos that's how much you're making she can possibly sell that packet of pimento for $20, the, the, the dry pimento, and use less than 100 pimentos. So you can see she can she's able to sell more for with less inputs. All right, um, four main areas um, that agro-processors are involved in are the general areas in terms of purchasing, which includes sourcing, um, selection, and transportation of the raw material production, which is washing, sorting, preparing, um, quality assurance, you know, um, more and more quality standards are becoming incorporated into businesses. So when we think quality assurance, we're thinking monitoring your operation at all stages of the production process and marketing. Marketing is quite important now um, for selling and advertising um, to get the products to market. In the hospitality industry, Anna would have covered that, um, you know, properly and, and, and very detailed. 
we know that it's a vast, it's a broad industry. It, encomp it encompasses food and beverage, restaurants, accommodation, and so on. And how does Kariri, where would Kariri fit in in these areas? Um, and even in the food industry, the food and beverage industry, they have similar um, processes, similar requirements in terms of what they are expected to do. All right. Um, the, this slide, before we jump into how can Kariri work with farm, with, with persons a lot in this industry, um, how else can value be added? So value can be added to a raw material by cleaning it. So for example, if it's, if it's fish in the fish industry, you clean the fish, you can season it, um, combining complementary products together we are seeing a lot of Kalaloo packs on the shelves. So anything that um, that makes the products more convenient to the customer, that that is how you would have added value um, with the with the shampoo, with the hair conditioner. The entrepreneur would have used an extraction method or with the pimento, she would have used drying. Right. And then also we're seeing a lot of jewelry makers emerging. So handcrafting, converting a piece of wood into something that, you know, increases the value and then labeling or packaging. We are we are seeing more and more packages that are resealable so that it can help either increase the shelf life of the product or um, help with storage um, or even transportation. All right. So opportunities for the agro-processing and hospitality sectors from the Kariri perspective. This is a quick overview of all of our departments. We have three locations, Center for Enterprise Development or CED, which is located at Freeport, our campus or main head office, which is a new campus, and then our Mokoya branch. I am going to focus on the three areas which is uh, our business and innovation departments, our biotechnology department, and our effluence management department, which would be most relevant to persons in the agro-processing industry, as well as the hospitality industry. So in terms of Kariri's business and innovation units, we have a number of services that we offer here. We start with the innovation gap analysis program and Anna would have mentioned a lot about gaps. So in this program, we have trained advisors, trained consultants who go into organizations to identify these gaps and work with companies to develop solutions that could be implemented. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a challenge or a negative gap. It could be where a company has an advantage and how do they continue to monetize or grow that advantage, right? Um, that be or build on that advantage, sorry. Um, then we have our idea advisory service. So we have we have farmers, we have persons in the along the value chain, you may have ideas. But what are you going to do with those ideas? How are you going to test it? Are you just going to take it to market and hope that there is a market? Our idea advisory service helps you to assess whether persons want your um, product, how much they would pay for it. Um, does it need to be a tweaked or, or does it need, do you need to pivot? Right, so that service helps with the ideas. So if you are a farmer and uh, let's say, for example, you have um, sour sap in your backyard and you want to make sucker bags or you want to make a sour sap drink, you know, what would be the steps in between to see, OK, does is there a market and where is the market? Um, we have our business hat tree program and through that program we have had a number of agro-processing um, businesses pass through there and we work with them to provide the tools and the 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 one-on-one -on -one advice or coaching to help them manage those businesses better and it would have mentioned as well e-commerce and we would see that with 
the pandemic um, and the border closures, etc., a lot of persons were no longer able to have brick and mortar um, operations as usual. So e-commerce platforms are emerging everywhere. Um, persons are encouraged to utilize these platforms to have virtual stores. Our ICT department has the capability to develop mobile apps, websites, integrated systems for SMEs to help. And um, finally, under our business training and support, we have an MOU with the Intellectual Property Office of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, when persons want to pre be prepared for export or to even protect their their, their products or their their um their brand, this is a this is a very um this is a very vital resource. So you know if you if you need to trademark your logo, if you need to protect your formulation, if um in the agro-processing industry, if you have developed a piece of equipment to help you do your business better, then there could potentially be the opportunity to have an industrial design or even a, a patent. So we can work with you to facilitate that process. Now, the next slide would be, I, I suppose, um, someone cut my slides off. All right, so I know that this slide would be um, the most anticipated slide, especially in the food and beverage industry for, for, for everyone along the entire chain, farmers, producers, manufacturers, caterers, um, and so on. So our biotechnology units and what they bring to the table, what they have to offer, because they have worked with thousands, probably, um, of, of with thousands of entrepreneurs bringing uh, food safe product to market. So one of the opportunities for agro-processors is that we have our technology base where you can do contract processing. If you are processing in your house or in your domestic um, space, you would need to get certifications, you would need to get um, health and safety approval and so on. Um, usually they recommend that you have your kitchen, if, your kitchen, if, if that's what you're using to process, separate from your dwelling. All right. If you utilize Kariri's process, um, contract processing tech, in our tech base, we have industrial grade equipment and we have our certifications specific for use. Um, our biotechnology unit also does product formulation. So to standardize products and ensure that you have consistency, especially if you are looking at exporting or getting your products on the shelf, standardization of the product is important. All right, we have had persons come to us, they just have the raw material, they don't necessarily know how to transform it into something. The, the, um, the professionals in that department, they are able to create products um, for, 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 well, for the entrepreneur, the business person. Um, we do shelf life studies, real time shelf life, shelf life um, studies. We also do a nutritional analysis. So this would be in um, collaboration with some microbial and chemical testing will be necessary here and now nutritional analysis would be in collaboration with our chemistry department. Um, nutritional analysis is required, especially for export. When you have to export, you will need to do that um, nutritional analysis. We do the testing, so I would have mentioned microbial and chemical. Um, you need microbial testing for the local market. Um, nutritional is mandatory for regional and international, um, not local per se. In terms of training, the biotechnology unit does training in local GAP, in 
um, starts spearheaded by NAMDEFCO. We also offer, they also offer HACCP training, GMP, and so on, um, as well as training in the hospitality um, sector. So how do you, you know, to, to meet requirement, um, how, what type of what type of equipment you need? If it's stainless steel, how how do they carry about themselves? How your nail should be in terms of the the garments? So they would provide training in that regard um, in the food safety sector to prevent outbreaks, um, to reduce food safety issues, and to reduce wastage. So a lot of caterers will tend to utilize that service, that option in terms of that training to prepare their staff when they um when they're sending them out we also work with companies to develop systems to meet certain standards in preparation for export or even to get onto shelves and so on because we don't want anybody getting sick all right and finally in terms of process optimization if you want to have your own um, processing facility, the biotechnology units can work with you to identify what equipment will be needed, um, what would be the best layout for the plant, etc. Waste disposal in, um, in, in many sectors, in many sectors, um, tend to be overlooked or under undervalued but it is it is becoming more and more um important in terms of how you dispose of your waste there's water pollution rules and so on um new water pollution rules that are are mandating that farmers um dispose of waste properly all right our effluent management units can help set up systems or optimize in um, existing systems to help save money as well as meet the requirements. So in that unit, um, you, okay, so you usually, you used to pay per pollutant, all right? So if you are, optimizing how much waste is is being emitted then you can save money right so you reduce waste to reduce the amount of fees you pay our effluent management unit also helps you fill out the form and ensures that you meet the requirements that they that that the ema and and the regulatory bodies need and we have a water quality testing unit to ensure that the water quality is of the standard that is required for safe, um, to be safe. So why is it important to have standards and food safety practices in place to increase your market reach, to ensure compliance for formulation standardization, to ensure the safety of a life, and also to save time and money. These are some examples of agro-processing entrepreneurs who would have passed through our program. We have King Specialty, she does um, cream liqueurs, and we have Twigs, he does teas, natural teas. And both of them, after they, they came in in our business hatchery program, so they would have developed their business skills and then they would have branched off into other arms of Kariri, for example, our biotechnology unit in terms of for product standardization or to use this or to use the technology base and so on. Um, they both are international. They have won international awards um, arising out of the quality of their products. And these two other entrepreneurs, Ari Tazi Passion, she does jams and uh, pepper jellies and so on and her products are now in you know all of the masses 
she she has expanded her distribution network since coming to our business hatchery program as well as utilizing our um our biotechnology unit to standardize her products because standardization was very important weighing weighing the ingredients and so on and then finally um we were able to work with sfm they 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 distribute um, saltfish and they wanted to create a value added product, which is saltfish acra. And we were able to help them identify the market um, as well as work on the formulation for the final product. And now you can find this product in almost every major grocery. So thank you guys for having me and for listening. If you have any questions, um, feel free to send it in the chat or if you need to contact us to discuss any of the um, items further, you can contact me at this number or email. All right, Crystal, over to you. Hi, yes, yes, two wonderful, wonderful presentations this afternoon. So we will move quickly along into our question and answer segment. The first question I have from Ms. Erica Beach and she would like to know what are the cost of career services? The cost of career services? Yes. OK, so um, the cost would vary depending on her needs. So it's not necessarily a one size fits all. So what she can do is um, send her contact information in the chat and we will definitely reach out to her and we would hear more about what she needs um, because some of our services are at no cost, but then others are, at, you know, there's a cost attached, right? In terms of the consultation, there's no cost for the consultation. Okay, wonderful. And the second question, this one is for Mr. C. Paul. Anil, Ms. Williams would like to know um, how can Netcross sister, she has a business that is related to the hospitality sector and she has been out of operation during the pandemic and the business has been hit hard. So she wants to know how can Netcross sister in moving forward? All right, in, in terms of funding, um, as I would have previously mentioned, we can grant for a first time borrower up to $250,000. And as we all know, NETCO is not just about a loan giving you financial assistance. We also provide business advisory. We provide client focused services as well as mentorship and entrepreneurial training. So what um, the, the, the participant would need to go is uh, the, the do, sorry, they should need to visit the branch that is closest to her. And we have branches um, in North, branches in, in the East, Tobago, Central, as well as in South. So as you can see, we are covered throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Go to the branch that is closest to you, and um, they will give you a list of our requirements. You have some basic requirements that you have to, to, to meet to qualify, but most definitely we would be able to, to look at an application from her. Okay, and I have another question for you, Mr. C. Paul. Um, can you tell us more about Netco's current promotions? All right, most definitely. And with Netco's current promotion, there is um, a promotion that we are running with our loan, uh, our loan packages that caters for the personal care service. We offer a loan packages, a loan package up to fifteen thousand dollars. In addition to the beverage and processing um, industry, we also offer thirty thousand dollars package for food processors, up to sixty thousand. And this package is primarily for the Christmas season. So there is a special package for the Christmas period. And uh, um, these packages also, luckily, what they do, I mean, Netco identifying that this is a trying time for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs may need further guidance. The packages come, apart from the, the funding aspect of it, the packages also integrate a workshop, a training workshop, business advisory, and um, our pre and 
post-loan assessment. So apart from the financial assistance that the entrepreneur would get, the packages would also in integrate workshops that are critical in operation right now. I mean, we have seen how digital transformation has taken, taken over and the, the critical need, as both mentioned by myself and Ms. Dabra Kariri, the critical need for this dig digital transformation and for, 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 for linkages. So, so our Christmas special packages are, are geared towards the different sectors that I would have um, outlined. Thank you, Mr. Sipol. Uh, that is all the time we have for questions today. Um, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank our speakers for the enjoyable presentation. Mr. Sipol, Ms. Dabu, we thank you for the instrumental advice that you gave to entrepreneurs today in the agro-processing and hospitality sectors. We also have to thank our wonderful order, audience who has been outstanding today and for taking time for, to log on. For further information on Kariri's operation, you can call 299-0209 extension 2212 and for NETCO, you can call 8215800 extension 2180. So this was a great start to our Global Entrepreneurship Week. I ask the audience to join us again tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. as we travel virtually to our central branch for a second webinar entitled The Mindset of an Entrepreneur. Bye for now. Thank you. Sure, I can repeat the numbers. For you, for Kariri, the number is 299-0209, extension 2212. And for NETCO, the number uh, 8215800, extension 2180.